new hay crop is here. And what this means for us is we're gonna start using our share of what we got off our field as mulch in the Ruth Stout no dig method. So come along on the journey and I'll show you how we're doing it. Need these guys, gonna have to haul some bales. wagon already and so here we go Every year we get our seven acres back here behind me. Uh, we've got a deal with a local guy. He comes in and he makes hay out of our pasture. And every year the yield is somewhere around seven, eight tons roughly. Um, it's not a super productive pasture, but it's, it's enough and then we take a ton and then he takes the rest. He does a whole bunch of small lots all over around in the area. And so it works out really well. So we don't <clears throat> pay anything for the hay. And what we do with the hay is we use it for mulching on our permanent beds. Um, perennials, things of that nature. We use the Ruth Stout method of uh, a thick hay mulch. So this is the time of year we come back and we reapply um, what we had on last year. So what we've had on last year is well on its way to being decomposed. And in some cases we have weeds and grasses and things started. So we'll show that when we, how we're applying it and where we're doing it and just basically how easy it is to take care of any weeds that already may have gotten started in, in, in one of your beds. So each of these bales is eh, roughly 60 pounds or so. And we take about two at a time. And this is mid to late June. So we'll be kind of working on this as, as we can through the course of the next month or so. Got about 34, 35 bales of hay here, and uh, we'll work our way through it. And then what we don't use, then we'll um, use in our composting process, or uh, we'll just bring it up and store it under a tarp so that if we need some during the course of the winter for some issue of mulch or something like that, we have some that's fairly dry. And that's kind of how it works out. So let's start loading up some bales and we'll take her up top and show you the beds of where we're gonna put it. Okay, a little car can only hold two, but that's pretty good. This is going to cover a lot of square footage. 
let's get it up the hill. Okay, here's the typical bed that was done last fall and uh, we ran out of straw so we weren't able to get it mulched until now it's June. We really didn't have any weed growth in here for the longest time. Most of the stuff just you know came with the May rains which we didn't have that much of but most of the stuff is it looks like oh my gosh the grasses are getting started in here. But when you really get down and you take a look at it, you know, pretty close, what you begin to find is, is that when you look at specific clumps that they're really not rooted very deep at all. Matter of fact, it's just pretty much right in the straw itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to, if it's a big clump, we'll just, you know, yank it up so it doesn't, you know, the roots are kind of disturbed. And then we're just going to put about four to, um, six inches of straw in or the hay over the top and what we'll do this is very simple you just spread it out and uh, we won't even wet it in um, actually we haven't watered this area at all this year and when you you go back and you pull back say the straw itself and you start looking uh, underneath the ground is very damp Matter of fact, it's almost wet. I mean, look at that. That's just rotted straw. It's in just great shape. So these roses have done outstanding with just uh, whatever rainfall we had. A little bit uh, bright. I have a day today where the clouds are coming in and out, so you got to bear with me a little bit on that. But the roses themselves look pretty healthy. So let's lay the straw down. Nothing much to it. We just got to. Uh, kind of cut the, the twine using my handy dandy uh, oh that's pretty tough twine cut both these strings there we go first bit of it just kind of fell on the ground there but it's not a big deal so we'll just take each one of these little, little loaves and just kind of spread it out like I said what we're trying to do is get about four to six inches down and that'll be good for the year Okay, well, sometimes folks ask, hey, how can you put this stuff down? Isn't it full of grass seed? And yeah, it does have grass seed in it, but interestingly enough, when you keep a, a pretty good mulch on it, I'm taking the opportunity to do some selective pruning on my roses here too. Um, it tends to, I mean, you do, as you can see, you got some sprout, but the deal is you just keep coming back and applying it and eventually, you know, whatever seeds are in this top layer that I'm putting on now are going to get buried and rotted down. So they'll either, you know, just continue to get buried under mulch, in which case I'm not really worried about it. So there might be a seed bank here for, you know, a hundred years, I guess, if you stop mulching. But, you know, that's, that's kind of where I'm at right now is just to kind of keep the uh, soil microbes going. There's lots of worms and good things going on in here. So... Some of those seeds will just end up being food for um, the soil biology. Well, one of the other things you can do with this mulch is since we're sheet mulching and basically sheet composting, uh, we take a lot of the extra deadheading off of the flowers and just bury it under the straw. So like you can see this pile of rose clippings here, we'll just, you know, just basically cover them up nice and neat. And they'll just rot down and feed the plants. So, another benefit. Okay, there it is. We got it all done. Took about a bale and a quarter to do this. 
The whole area for the roses is about, oh, probably a little over 100 square feet. And we got four to six inches on, plus we got the roses deadheaded. And all the deadheaded stuff is under the mulch. This is pretty cool. Just a note on Ruth Stout. She's an author. Um, she developed this system. She used to live in Connecticut when, uh, well, she's passed on now. But she has a book out there, and you can find it in our show note links. And uh, it's called The No Work Garden, or appropriately. I think that's the title of it. Anyway, we'll have it in the show link down below. And that is it. There is nothing much more that we need to do now. The rain we're going to get in a couple days is going to kind of settle this in. And uh, if we need to irrigate maybe a few times during the course of the summer, we do have micro sprinklers in here. Uh, other than that, there's not much more to do other than just kind of keep the roses trimmed up. So you can see the whole technique is actually pretty easy to do. And as I talked about, this is something that Ruth Stout published in a book probably 40 years ago or maybe. And it's just a sheet mulching technique. We use it pretty successfully around all our perennials. Keeps the weeds down. Uh, we don't really have to worry about spring or summertime weeds of any consequence. This only took us probably, oh gee, it, you know, getting the bale and everything. If I put an hour into it, I'd be surprised. You know, and 100 square feet's all done. I won't have to bother with it again till, well, maybe fall or maybe next spring. Anyway, I want to thank you for watching. And if you liked what you see today, please give us a thumbs up. We always like thumbs up. See my green thumb. And, you know, if you're not a subscriber, please check out our playlist. We got a lot of other videos on the other topics about here on the farm. And I want to thank you for watching today, and I hope you all have a good day.